to my brother Jared, who I love the most. He was always so horrible to me. I couldn't understand it. We worked together. We built businesses together. And they never said it was hard at the time. It came in with a gift or whatever. And, you know, we worked so hard together. Built a rang together. I am asking you to forgive me. Because that day when we fought, it was over a woman that I did not sleep with or had not been aware of. And um, I had enough of you coming into my room, into my space. And in the end, You know, we rucked it. I had powers, so before you restrain me with a fist and threaten to smack me out, I did happen to, I've checked the tape, I did happen to quickly push you into the back of the door, you knocked your head. I have forgiven myself. You was always so horrible. But forgive yourself. You did have a power over me, a strength, and um, I never got to say sorry. More, more, there is more to say. I have. Restrained, screamed and shouted at Marlon. I have tried my best with him. He doesn't want to admit it. And uh, over Christine's, no, Caitlin, over her birthday, I bought, I was the only one to buy her presents at the time. Because I thought if she sold them, maybe she'd be able to get out of where the fuck she is. So I tried to make a plan for her. All I got told was how I ruined the wedding. And in the end, he smacked me. It didn't hurt, Marlon. What hurt me was how much you've always wanted to keep doing that. And how you actually hit Caitlin, and that's why she is the way she is. Or something went down, because she looked fine. You never admitted it. It haunts you. You know, mum was in on it as well. I saw the pictures. And um, Wes has had enough as well. When I was free, Wesley terrorised me and Jared. One day I grabbed the, the um, yellow broom and I smacked Wes over the head with it. You know, these two terrorised us from birth. It was racist. We won. I mean, to have that to your name was uh, free, I smacked you with a broom. Must have been really hell to live with once it got out. I don't think it's on. I just, I was violent. I had to fight my way out. And I even came back for mum. Thinking, shit, shit, I'll, I'll, I'll leave Cambridge and come back. And even that didn't work out, I was homeless. God, the arguments. I had her up against the wall. I could not put up with her anymore. We all had enough of her. And quite frankly, she still gambles. She spent a hundred grand gambling. All our inheritance. She still does. That's still sad to this day. That's still happening. She's a, she's a liar to the end. They even have a statue of her in Cambridge. A worship. And she won't change until the end. I don't know what to say. I tried my hardest to support her when everyone left. 
everyone got rich and successful and left. And uh, I forgive myself. I got violent with mum and I hit her a few times. But the medication didn't help because back then they're trying to kill me with it. Because they thought, fuck it, why not fuck him? While, while this woman there was fucking all the boys, trying to get him to beat me up. Here goes another psycho woman, psychopath. Just because I didn't like her when I met her. Was it the way I looked? Was it the look in my eyes? I sussed her out from the beginning. I thought, no. No, man. Fuck her. I already know what you want. You know, these women. Perfect love. You don't care. You've had it all your life. I'm not going to admit it. I didn't like her. I kept saying this. I'm not willing to die for him. Trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Marlon got into trouble, trouble, trouble time and time again because of a woman. It was supposed to be a lesson for me. It only made me cross. You know? This kept happening. It wasn't he, he was trained. You know, he must have walked something violent. He must have frightened him. There was there was definitely something and he did come to the mental health. He just looked different. He did do time. And it's not pretty in there, everyone's given. So no, I've calmed down, I don't think it's acceptable to hit a woman, but at the same time, if they're just able to do it just because of the way they look, then what are we supposed to do? Not suss it out and be intelligent? See the situation and think, nah, not for you. But um, some women like that. They bring it out because they don't actually take the time to properly listen to what you're trying to tell them. What me and mum went through with my schizophrenia, she was always there and I'll take note of that. But it wasn't genuine. It was always about, OK, he's back for a bit. All right, well, he can just go back in there. So I'll just ring and just send him back in there because I've had enough. We got that flat together. Because of my condition. I lost the Garden of Eden. Just because she won't admit it. I even try to praise the fact that they're trained in it. Went to hospital to try and get a cut. So I could get my appendix out. They didn't want to help me. These people. Are condemned. If they're not honest. And I'm not praying. Tell you what, nah, you can pack that in. That already tells information that you panic. So don't bother anymore, just be sure. Just be honest. Just be honest about it. You know, everyone thought I used this mental health as an excuse. I got comfortable. I got really comfortable with it. I thought, God, I'm only, I'll be 30 in April. Jesus. I thought, um, this is for life. I'll be stuck with it for life. What is life? There's no cure for this. This is it. I'm the only one I'm convinced that's ever had it. I've cured my voices because they're afraid of me. But 
drown them out. And um, this is it. Great. <laughs> you know, no day's a good day. Convince myself of loves. Convince myself it's okay to look this way. And uh, 